this painting today, I'm going to guide you to paint some a colourful sky. We're going to paint some mountains. I'll show you how to do the lake down here and then some beautiful trees. With any of the paintings you make at your own, you are going to hang this on your wall. So if you want a little bit more of a stormy sky or you want three trees on this side and just one on that side and maybe a specific mountain range, it's yours. You can do whatever you want with it. I guide, this is how I blend the colors, use this brush, this is how I paint the mountains. Where you place your mountains and how much color you use, that is up to you. When you paint quite a bit, you get to know your brushes, you get to know your paints, you get to know what happens when you play around on the canvas. You have to do it a few times. I by now know what kind of day I'm having. When I start painting and I see, oh, today I'm using a lot of white paint, so it's much lighter. Some days I have heavy brush strokes, especially when I've done two or three painting parties in one day. By the end of the day, my hand gets a little heavy. So it's all about mood that comes out on the painting. Don't fight that. You're not planning on selling this tomorrow, so the main thing for you is to have fun. When you start working on canvases to sell, that's a little bit more pressure. This, it's not the same here. We are here to have fun. Let that inner artist out. You can turn your canvas sideways if you want to. So then you'll have your horizon a little higher, or you can even have it still low with higher peaks for your mountains. You can have taller trees. It's up to you. You can do whatever you like. I like when I work on a box canvas, sometimes I wrap my picture around the side this one I haven't done anything. I'd probably just paint the edges black on this one. You can change the colors. There's another version of this painting, a lot more detail in the mountains and a very vibrant background. It's a much longer, that is a 12 by 36 canvas, which is just lovely, but today I'm on this one. So you can paint on canvas board, you can paint on you can paint on a chair, you can paint on a cereal box, it doesn't matter. It's about having fun and um, relaxing. Everyone, you should have your canvas. I have black and white, I have green, this is cobalt blue, ultramarine, fire red and yellow. I have three brushes. I have my bigger filbert brush, I've got a number eight filbert. This one is what I use for my trees to make it look like that. So if you're going to use a flat, you're not going to get that exact tree. If you're going to try and do it with a fan brush like Famous Bob, um, it's not going to look like mine. But if you want it to look more like my trees, then that's the brush. This is a number eight filbert. You can maybe use a bigger one. That should do. You'll just have bigger trees. And then I also have a number eight round. I use this more for sketching my mountains and to add the snow. So you can have a bigger one. It's okay. Yeah, bigger one should be fine. Smaller one should also be okay. With these brushes, if you push down, you get bigger lines. If you just, as you just touch the canvas, you'll get thinner lines with this one. All right, so step one that I do is I wet my canvas. So today I'm just going to wet half the canvas because the, wetting the canvas just helps with the blending of colors. So this is where a lot of blending is happening on that part. So I don't really care for the bottom to wet the whole canvas. So just this top part, I am going to use my big brush into the water and just going to apply some water on the canvas. Just make sure the whole canvas is wet. How much water? When it starts running down, I kind of grab it and spread it out. I just want it all shiny and wet. That's all. This one is a slightly different canvas I have here today. All right, so half the canvas is wet. I'm going to tap with a little dryer. Now I just want to pick up some paint. When I pick up paint with these brushes, I push down with the brush into the paint both sides. 
the bristles open up and that's how it grabs the paint. I never scoop paint. Scooping paint's just silly because when you start painting it flies onto the people next to you. That's not going to work. Or onto your furniture, right? Okay, push down lots of paint and this whole center area, I'd say two and a half inches up, lots of white paint. Can you see how I'm loading up the canvas here? And then without cleaning my brush, even with the white paint on there, I'm going into the yellow. We're painting the yellow that's in the back here. Just a little bit of yellow, put it down, spread it out, and then you can see how far it goes. If you find that this is too much, clean your brush, use your paper towel and wipe off the yellow, and then just play with some white on top. If it is too little, well, you know what to do. Just load it up with yellow paint. Lots of brush strokes. Less brush strokes, it will be more streaky. More brush strokes, it blends in more. I kind of like to drag it all the way. Like that, to get rid of the brush marks. If, you're, if your canvas is very dry, you're going to hear it, for one. And you'll have lots of little white spots where the paint's not getting covering the whole canvas. Just load up more paint onto your brush. All right, that's all I'm going to do here. I'm just going to wash my brush, dry it off. I'm going to pa paint some more white paint. Push down with the brush to pick up the paint. And I'm going to do it right above the yellow here. I'm moving a little bit faster. You can pause the video. That's the reason why I decided not to go live so that you'll be able to pause the video. Steering alive. I try and keep myself busy while you catch up, but when I just paint, record the video, I can play, you can play the video and you can pause when you need to. So right above the yellow, I painted some white paint, goes all the way up here. And without cleaning my brush again, I'm going into the red. We're going to paint this area here. The red goes pretty far, so I'm going to put some red out like that, wipe my brush a little bit. And then start blending this in. And then you can decide, so sit back a little and think, do I want more red? Do I want, want less red? I kind of like just the amount I have here. So again, if I leave it like that, it's going to stay streaky. If I keep moving my brush, the colors blend together, that white and that red. So more brush strokes, the colors blend together. Less brush strokes, it will be more streaky. So now to take the red into the yellow, because I don't want that distinct line there. I'm going to wipe some of this off. I need a new paper towel. I'm going to move my brush from the yellow into the red and back up. And this won't happen if the one paint is dry and the other one's wet. Because then I would just put the... It would just happen that the red goes on top of the yellow but because the yellow is still wet i'm blending it together a lot of people like to use a little bit of white paint when they blend the colors together you don't need to do that i just use a clean brush because the paint is wet it's already there you're literally just moving the paint around so you can keep going the more you do that, the softer the blend will be from the one color to the other. I don't want to spend too much time on that because I don't want this top part to dry because then I won't be able to blend the blue and the red together. So now again, I'm putting down some white paint and I'm doing it slightly above the red. So I don't want to pick up the red yet. Not yet. So slightly above it a little bit of a space in between. All right, without cleaning my brush, there's still some white paint on here. I'm picking up a little bit of blue paint. That is too much. The blue goes really far. I don't know what brand you have, but the one that I have goes really far. Wiping off that blue. And now I will start blending that into the white. 
I'm gonna play up here first. I might want a little bit more, I think, especially right at the top here. It can be a little bit darker up there. Like that. All right, so now I wanna blend those two together. Wipe my brush. and go into the red what happens when red and blue gets together they make purple well purple-ish you see how i'm dragging the purple a little uh, the blue a little further and then as i go up the red goes a little higher up fun sky There you go. I like that. Soft. Yeah. Have fun with it. And if you don't like it, so you have too much blue, take some clean paper towel, wipe off the blue, wash your brush, just go with some white on top of it. Another thing you can do if there's things you don't like, use a dryer, dry your canvas, and then just paint over it. It's acrylic paint, it can cover it. Some colors are a little see-through, like the yellow and the green. Um, some, well, depends on the paint that you're using. Some are very translucent. You might have to put a coat of white down and then paint over it, but you should be able to cover. Just paint over it. I need some paper towels. I think I might go a little bit lower with my yellow because I want my mountains to go quite low so I'm just gonna go a little bit lower with my yellow just adding some white paint a little bit more and then some yellow Oh, I like little bits of yellow up in the red there. Give my brush a good wash. All right, so now we've painted the sky here in the back. So we've done our yellow, our reds into our blues. The next thing we're going to do is use our round and we're going to mix up a little bit of gray paint. When I draw out my mountains, I hold my brush a little further back at the end here so that I have a little less control of the brush because I don't want to go and draw it out like this. I want to be a little bit loose. I then go in the back here and draw out my horizon line. Something I quite often see is that people just do little peaks like that. Try and be a little bit loose. Make one a little bit lower than the other one. Try not to have the same height. Try not to have the same size and then this this one's a little bit bigger and that one, these are pretty much similar, but play a little bit with them. Here I have lots of high ones with, to the right of each one, there's a little small one. I try not to do patterns too. I often find a big one, a small one, a big one, a small one, a big one. Remember to breathe when you do that. So to mix the colors, I take a little bit of black. Remember the black goes really far into some white and I mix some gray. I'm not going to mix a whole lot now. Just want enough to do my sketch, my mountain outline. Take a deep breath in and then hold your brush a little further back. I'm going to go, I think I'm going to start on the side. A little crooked. Let's go a little tip over there. I think I want it a little rounder. And all the way down. There we go. And then for the gray, I'm just going to take 
it up like that and paint that gray because we are going to play with our black mountain here and do the foot remember to keep enough space for your lake down here we don't want to go too low with our mountain so that we don't have space for the lake so now that i have my mountain i'm going to mix up more gray paint i'm going to use my medium size brush this one over here and just going to paint all of this gray when I do that, a lot of my yellow is going to disappear. You can already see that there's just a little bit that shows. And a little bit of the yellow is going to come through on the gray because my yellow is still wet. So I normally don't mind that. If you don't want that, maybe have a paper plate or a, a dryer close by and just dry it a little bit. I always say it's when the color comes through, it's a little bit of a reflection from the light. So it's all good. Taking a little bit more black. This time I'm mixing a little bit more gray. And it's okay if it's different colors. We're going to add the highlights on the left. We're going to add some snow in there. You can see that this mountain is much lighter than this one here. So it doesn't matter. Normally when I start painting it in, I also change the shape a little bit because then you can see it when it's all colored in, you can really see the shape. I'm not too worried about the bottom, but I do want this to be solid. When you're moving your brush and you see these spaces in between, you don't have enough paint on your brush. You want, we want to cover all of that. Make sure this camera is still recording. We are still going strong. All right. Up. Isn't this the coolest way to spend an evening? Moving paint around, making marks on a canvas. Because that's all you're doing. There we go. I think I like my mountains. Maybe I'll take this one a little bit more like that. There we go. Using the snow later on. See how I drag the snow further here that puts this mountain in the back and brings this one to the front. So then I'll start playing with that over here. Put that one in the back, bring this one to the front, maybe this one in the front, that one in the back. Give your brush a good wash. I have to dry that a little bit. So painting the black mountains. Remember, you can pause this video. I know I move really fast. When I paint the black mountains, try not to copy. And I often see it where people paint because they're a little bit lower than these ones. They sit right in front of these mountains, but try not to copy that shape that you have here. You can go a little higher here, a little lower. I normally draw the foot of the mountain first so that I I think I definitely want some lake up here like this maybe I'll go lower this side there we go and then I start drawing in my mountains 
So still my, my round brush, I just roll my brush in the black paint. It is going to pick up some of the gray because mine is still wet. You can dry yours if you want. I don't mind painting when it's still wet. Remember, try not to copy the top mountain. And just the tip of the brush, I roll my brush, just the tip of the brush, we're just sketching it out. We're going to use some, some black paint to fill it in. Take this one to do this. So it has that little foot, so it puts these ones in the back and then this one. So it looks like that little bit there. Normally put this a little bit more to the side instead of right in the center of the canvas. See, I have a little bit more to the side here. To get more of a solid line, when you have a line that's not very defined, I just use a little bit more paint. Wash my brush. That one on the side, it will take me forever to paint the Black Mountains with that one. I go back to my medium, or you can even use your biggest brush. When I paint these in, normally I sit back, have a look at my mountains, and then I might change the shape a little bit more. All right. Lots of black paint, push down with a brush right in there, pick up lots of black paint, and then just drag it out on the canvas. See how different this painting is already to that one. So every time I do it, it's slightly different. And yours probably looks completely different to mine. If you really want to copy mine exactly or my style, you'll have to study my style or spend some time with my paintings. It's like calligraphy. If you learn to do calligraphy, to do all those, uh, whatever font you want to learn, you'll have to do it a few times until your hand gets used to how the pa paint's flowing, how it should move, and then eventually it just becomes second nature. So you can't just pick up a paintbrush and expect to have a painting that looks exactly like this. Even people that have painted for a long time, they create, they start developing their own style. So when they want to copy someone else's painting, it will take them a little bit, a little bit more effort to get there. There are people that are really good at copying other people's work. There we go. Black mountains. Give my brush a good wash. We're going to let this dry and then we're going to come back later to do the snow before we do the mountains. The next thing I'm going to paint is the green hills down at the bottom here and then I'm going to do the lake. When I paint the green hills, I use some green paint. 
I also put in a little bit of the cobalt blue just to change the color slightly or even ultramarine just to make it slightly darker and then I go back with some yellow on top for some highlights in the back here there's a little bit of yellow with the green my green paint is a little translucent very see-through you'll see when I apply it so I do add a little bit um, of yellow in there and I actually come back and do a second coat so I'm using my big brush going into the yellow paint and I'm going to do a hill on this side here I'll take it right into the green hold it a little bit further back it doesn't have to be an, a round hill you can play a little bit like you did with your mountains I'm going to do that today and add that one down there when you have an easel like this one um, has this little lip here to paint in there I'm just going to turn my canvas sideways just to get some paint down here you can hold it to hold it up lots of paint I'm going to do one coat and then I'm going to come back and do a second coat. This is just my base coat. Go to the other side. some yellow paint and I'm going to just paint on top of this add some yellow in there we're going to have trees over here so I'm not going to spend too much time on there I need a little bit more yellow paint So now when I do the yellow at the bottom here, it's going to put this little hill in front of the two that I painted. There we go. I think that's good like that. Right, so my lake is a little bit darker in the back, much lighter to the front. I play with a little bit of blue in there. I'm going to take some green, mix it in with some blue. Start right in the back here. I might have to come back and do coat, two coats on this one too. So I'm not touching it completely, like barely touching the black at the back there. If you do go in there, wipe your brush, because if you paint further down, you're going to drag that black right into your water. And it's okay if you touch here, because you can always just come back with the green and paint this area back in to cover onto the water. I turn my brush 
sideways just to get into the small spaces. You can also just grab a smaller brush to get in there. Remember to breathe while you're painting. How cool is that? I do want a little darker back here. I picked up a little bit of ultramarine just to mix it in there. It's okay if the green is still dry because I'm mixing green into my water anyway. I mean, if the green's still wet. <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to add a little bit of white because I do want it slightly lighter back here. I mean, in the front. Canadian Lake. As this is drying, I'm going back in to do a second coat, especially in the back here. Make it a little bit darker. I want to cover all the little white dots that's there. I'll stand back a little bit and have a look. We have a lake. Put some power on there. All right. It's funny how different the color looks. On the camera. There we go. So now we have our lake, we have our green hills, we have our mountains. The next thing that we'll do before we start doing the trees is add some snow to those mountains. So it is almost dry. I'm going to start with the grey ones. And the first thing I do is I break up the mountain. So I use my round brush and I'm going to do use the white first. And I'm literally going to do a little squiggly line with some white paint. 
going down the mountain like that. I'm going to do white on the left and I'm going to do a dark gray with a little bit of um, ultramarine blue in it so it's a dark grayish bluish color for the shadow. And to do this snow I'm literally just making marks with the brush holding it really far back and I'm just adding snow in like this. It is just a few marks. So what happens right now, it looks pretty gray as I'm adding it in. I'm going to come back and add lumps of white paint on top of it. So I need this to dry a little bit and then I'm going to come back and do some more. I'm going to break up this little one here, a little crooked line. Add some white. Do the same with this little mountain. Remember the mountains have a little bit more snow to the top than when further down. And see, adding the snow coming this way puts this mountain in front of that one. loose brush strokes that's good enough and the last one should have a little fun here go that way and then come this way see how I'm holding the brush to the side just making marks these are shadows and highlights top a little bit more solid. Oops. Above the mountain there, but that's okay. I'm gonna come back with a little bit more white. Here, I'll keep it gray. Remember to breathe. Don't judge, just do it. I do find a lot of people just do the top bits of the mountain. Drag it really far down. Don't do just these, the top bits. There is snow further down, unless you use something else for highlights further down. But I always do snow all the way down to the bottom or highlights all the way down unless you want a lighter gray instead of so much snow but don't stop with the highlights at the top you do want to take the highlights all the way down okay now i mix up a gray paint which is a little bit darker than what we used for the mountain that was my mountain color. I'm going a little darker, but I'm adding some blue into it. So it's a really dark gray, bluish color. And that's what I do on the side, on the right side. So here, I like to go right at the edge a little bit and then drag it out like that. I've got to stand back when I do this. There you go. That's good enough. I'm drag it out this way. Put some shadows down there. 
there. This one. And there's a few little ones in there. And then you do the same with the black mountains. Let's see what these look like. Still using my round brush, taking back into the white paint. And now I break up this mountain this one's still very wet <laughs> and start adding some white on top there. I don't want to cover the whole mountain because then it's just going to blend in with everything else. Just making marks. Don't think does it look like snow? No, it doesn't. It's just marks. A little snow on this side, maybe some over there. This one, I'm going to go down here, but this comes in front of this, like that. Maybe there's some grey. You can add a little blue in there too. the shadows on the darker mountains. That same dark grey with the blue that you mixed, I use that for the shadows on the black mountains too. And back with lumps of white to extra add some extra little bits of white on the black mountains there remember to wipe your brush because as you paint if the black is still wet you're picking up black so your white becomes slightly gray and because it's so black you don't always pick that up there we go. I do want a little bit more white paint on my grey mountains. They're just not vibrant enough. Oh, that's a lot of white paint. Could do a few snow mountains with that. And it's okay if it's textured, a little lump sitting right there on there. Gives your painting a little character, right? Nothing wrong with too much paint. Okay. 
see what I'm doing here? There's nothing down at the bottom of my mountains. And I'm not fond of that. I like that I need to drag this down a little bit. Right down to the bottom. I'm just making marks. Just adding some texture to my mountains. So where the water meets the mountains, I'm also adding a light blue. So I'm using the water, the color I use for the water, with some white, and I do this little outline right at the bottom. But the line's not the same thickness everywhere. So as I do it, here and there, it will be a little bit more white than in other areas. And it's not pure white. You use the color from the water with some white, so you can see on my palette that's what I'm using but on the canvas it almost looks like it's bright white but it's not that's on the edge if it's too much you just go back and you paint it out cancel out what you don't like add some green in my canvas here. There we go. We have some snow. Always stand back. A really great way to look at your paintings too is to take a photo, use your camera. It gives you a very different perspective of your painting. So the last thing we're going to do is painting our trees and I'm gonna do it this way so I'm gonna do my first one right over here and I'm using my Fulbert brush I'm gonna mix a little bit of black with some green paint and I do it right on this side here mix some green and black to make a really dark green I flat my make my brush flat like that because I'm just going to do a line down for this tree over here. Oh, where do I want it? Maybe in between those two mountains here, maybe to the side. I made my brush flat. I'm holding it vertical and just dragging it down. When you push down, you're going to get a thick line, but you just want to barely touch the canvas and do the line down. It doesn't matter if it's straight or not well, I just use it as a center line when I start doing my leaves so keep my brush like this I am picking up some green paint dark green I break up the bristles just on the side of the palette like that and now it looks like it has a little bit of a bad hair day which is all good and I'm gonna start dabbing at the top here first thing I do is kind of hold it vertically and just dab so I have a few leaves going on there and then hold it angled like this so when I'm on the left side of the the horizon this line down here the trunk I hold the brush this way and when I'm on the other side I hold it that way but slightly angled you're not going in straight like that you hold it slightly angled like this it's when the bristles touch at that angle that it gives you those little lines that go down that looks like leaves Barely touching, I'm going to touch and you're dabbing. You're not doing brush strokes, you're just going in and out. Go in and out like this. Dab, dab, dab. And the center is always a lot more dense and then you move out to the leaves. So I'm going to dab a few times in the center and then I'm going to move out. Dab, dab, dab. And then I'm going to move out. You've got to keep track. My white here is still wet. My black over here is still a little bit wet. So when I get there, I might pick up that paint so you gotta you gotta be careful because you're gonna drag it out it's gonna change the color of your tree you've got to decide if you like it or not so I'm going slightly tilt this way a little bit more dab 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 and then go out that way so what I did with this tree is you can see I went out this way that way this way that way this way that way trees don't really look that symmetric so you can play a little bit more a little bit 
heavier on this side then heavy on that side um, certain areas don't have that much leaves so you can have an area that's not that dense and then go dense again it doesn't there's no wrong tree the only one that sees it as wrong as you there's I love when I go driving I'm like oh I've seen someone paint that tree before see how I'm picking up white paint I'm just going back it's all good you're not seeing it I can see it and it's almost as if my tree starts disappearing in the black but that's why I use the dark green because we do it in three layers we do the dark green then I use just green and then some green and yellow mixed for some highlights dab 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 in the center and then I start going out when you go further down you're pushing harder with a brush so you can have bigger brush strokes bigger leaves so at the top barely touching and as you go further down bigger leaves I see a lot of people keep that same brush strokes they like that fine the fine leaves I like when it gets a little heavier at the bottom and with these trees they're not on these hills they're actually in front of them so you're looking through them to the hills in the background and here you gotta every now and then they look all the same so I go and change the go dab the brush on the side of the plate again so that they can change a little bit that is good enough so I'm gonna wash this and then go just with some green and I'm not gonna wait for it to dry I like to do it while it's still wet because it picks up a little bit of that darker color barely touching at the top just adding a little bit of the lighter green in there you don't have to do a lot you just want the, the little bits of highlights in there go further down you're gonna love when you do the yellow on here it just makes it pop the yellow and green There we go and then some yellow and green and when you do the yellow and green I do a lot on the left because you can see where the sun's coming from but you don't have to you can add those highlights everywhere break it up a little bit and much softer brush stroke again barely touching at the top and they don't have to match the branches exactly because you're you're seeing right through them so you can still see those black ones in the back there if it's too much I leave it dry a little then I just go with some green on top of it it just adds layers to the tree here you can play a little now I'm making this branch look in front of those ones back there there we go how's that for a tree I'll bring it a little closer see the highlights in there so do the dark green first then the lighter green and then go back with some yellow I want to hide that little branch over there I mean the trunk there you go so I'll do another one give my brush a wash go with a really tall one right here oh, going really high today all the way down make some green and black give my brush a bad hair day barely touching at the top holding it angled like this when I'm on the left let's push a little bit like that so just vertical just to add a few leaves and then I start dabbing very lightly 
So when I'm on the left, I angle slightly left. Push, push, push. And then I go slightly right. A little bit more. And now when I start going further and further, I push a little bit harder with the brush because I want bigger leaves. They'll be bigger at the bottom. See how dense my center is? And I'm and I'm now getting it right where I don't have them looking like a fishbone, one on each side, too symmetrical. So that I can't get my hand to turn. Get to an angle. See, it disappears over here with all the black. That's okay, it's there. You want it like that. That's why we do those highlights, to bring it back out again. Dance, dance, dance in the center, and then go out. Uh -huh, sounds like dance, dance, dance. I'm gonna lift it a little, because I wanna put it in front all the way down. This is not a tree on that hill back there. I want that hill to still look like it's way back there. It always becomes a little messy down here, but adding the highlights helps to turn it back into leaves again. Now I'm using just the green, barely touching at the top because you just want those little bits of highlights. You see the little highlights come through. And then some yellow and green. I picked up yellow, it was too bright, but I liked it, so I just went back and added that color a little higher up, so then it balances it all, all out. It all works out. And if anyone asked, we planned it that way. There you go. And that is your painting. I just can't leave it with just two trees, so I am going to do another one. Never just two, three. A little one over there. some green green and yellow that's too yellow It's a little bit of a shadow. This one. Uh, 
and that is it happy painting remember a million dollar signature bottom right hand side hope you enjoyed that one